the Lord. I'm really excited tonight because we're going to continue on with the love series that I started on Sunday. We're going to move that to Wednesday nights for the next three Wednesdays. We've already done three uh, sermons, <laughs> as you would want to call them. So this series is entitled Love, What is it good for? A definition of love. And as I was driving here, I just was really thinking about, the, you know, the teaching and how, what God wanted to do and how he wanted to open up. And I just kept getting that. This is really important that we really understand what love is because love yeah. is the ultimate manifestation of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again because love is the ultimate manifestation of God. Yes. Because in 1 John 4, it says that God is love. Yes. Right? So when we are operating in love, we are manifesting the presence of God. Yes. Amen. It's not signs, wonders, and miracles that shows that God is here. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. one way. But the Bible doesn't say that God is miracles, signs, and wonders, does it? No. no. It says that God is love. Yes. So the ultimate manifestation of God and his presence is love. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, God, that's good. That's why it's so important that we understand what love is and that we're actually walking in it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. You got to be a doer of the word. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We can't just be hypocrites and act one way in church and another way at home. That's right. And I understand we're all changing. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. We're all trying to, you know... <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in God. No, everybody is changing. Yeah, it is. Sometimes it's a slow process. Because you gotta get revelation of it. Right? It's not enough to just know it. You gotta get revelation that this is applying to you, and as you walk in it, you'll get the desires of your heart. See, the enemy wants to deceive you into thinking that, well, no, you're not. If you submit to God and if you do it God's way, you're not going to have any fun. You're not going to get anything. And that's a lie. It's a huge lie. I know I've lived it both ways. That's right. I'm telling you, I'm living my best life now Amen. with God, following his rules, submitting under his authority, than trying to do it my own way. That just led to... Depression, discouragement, disappointment, lack. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> lack. You know, and we're learning that on Sunday. We just started in our undercover series talking about what it means to really be under God's authority, what it means to submit under God's authority. And when we don't do that, you're going to experience lack, vulnerability, unrest, <laughs> anxiety, fear, all of those things. When God has provided for us peace, protection, and provision. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So part of walking in love is submitting under his authority. Yes. Ooh. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Part of walking in love is submitting under his authority. Because see, a lot of times what we're doing is we're praying, but we're asking God to come out of alignment from his word. Mm. Oh. Mm. And this is why our prayers aren't getting answered. Because he can't. Because he can't do it. Because we're asking amiss. We don't know what to ask. And we ask amiss when we are asking. Because we're not walking in love. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, for example, get them, Lord. Get them. <laughs> well, what kind of get them are you praying about? Like, mm -hmm. the bad kind of get them? Because <laughs> usually that prayer is what that is. Mm -hmm. You know? Show them, Lord. You just show them. And God's like, I'm going to show them, all right. And he gets them saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and blesses them. Right. You're like, that is not what I meant. By you know. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Yep. <laughs> and see, we underestimate the power of love. Yeah. Because if we truly knew the power that the that agape has within us, we would submit to it a lot sooner and a lot quicker. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Glory to God. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Say amen to that. Amen. 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 That's a good amen right there. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let me give you the definition of agape just to refresh our memory. Agape in the Greek means that it's a divine love that gives and gives and gives, even if it's never responded to, thanked, or acknowledged. I'm going to say that again because this is really hard to swallow. Yeah. Because it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm not going to get anything in return? That's the world's love. I'll do this for you if you do this for me. Right? I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back. But that's not agape. What's agape? A divine love that gives and gives and gives, even if it's never responded to, thanked, or acknowledged. It isn't based on our response. But it's based on the decision to keep loving regardless of a recipient's response or lack of a response. Right? So... I was just talking to a young man this week, and he's really frustrated with um, a leader in his church. I'm not going to get too specific. <laughs> and he's really frustrated because he feels that this leader is humiliating him and um, just really giving him a hard time unnecessarily. Uh, and so I, he had emailed me this page, what's going on? I can't take it anymore. And I'm going to say something. I said something to the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, Lord, how do I respond? And I just started out really nice, like, you know, dear so-and-so, you know, I'm really sorry that you're going through this and that you're frustrated, you know. Um, however, uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. however, even though this leader is not exhibiting the fruit that you think he should be exhibiting and demonstrating, you still need to walk in love. Amen. You still need to have that fruit. And then I gave him access to the undercover series and why you need to submit. Because I said, you know, this is the person that your pastors put in place. So you have to honor that. You might not agree with it, but you have to honor that and you have to start submitting to that. And I know sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow. Because I know the situation and then some of the things that he said, I'm like, oh, that's really not good. But I can't judge it because I'm not really there. I'm getting one side of the story, you know, so it's like, <laughs> but regardless, my advice to him, because he's like, I'm going to say something. I said, well, my advice to you is not to say anything at all. Mm -hmm. You need to go through this series on how to submit to authority before you say anything. Mm -hmm. And then you need to go through it again. And you really need to ask the Lord to open up your heart and show you where you're missing it. Because it's not based on what he does, but it's based on your response. And, God, and, and the enemy is trying to take you out of the will of God. Don't allow him to do that. Because he can get so upset and so frustrated that he gets kicked out of the church. That's where God placed him. And if we don't walk in love, if we yield to offense, if we yield to frustration, if we yield to everything that's not of God, we move ourselves out of his will. Mm -hmm. And then we miss all the blessings that come with that. Mm -hmm. And it might not seem like a blessing when you're getting attacked, because it never feels like that. <laughs> right? But... It's all in how you look at it. Like, all right, you know what, Lord? You're building my character here. Because I really want to smack this person in the face. But I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And I, Because it takes faith mm -hmm. to walk in love. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, like it yeah. takes love to walk by faith. Yep. You need both. You cannot separate the two. Because mm -hmm. it just takes a lot of faith to love some people. So this is why we're going through this series to really understand what love is and what it means to walk in love. Because a lot of times our definition is not the Bible definition. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we try to water down the word to fit our situation. Mm -hmm. And when you water down the word, 
You're not living a victorious life. No. 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 You're justifying. Mm -hmm. And that also moves you out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. We don't water down the word of God here in this church, do we? Yeah. No. No, we're not. No. Amen. All right, so we already defined the first the first six characteristics of agape, of the agape kind of love. So let's go over to 1 Corinthians 13. Say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. First Corinthians 13, and we are starting at verse 4. I'm reading out of the King James Version. I'm going to read the King James Version first, and then I'm going to go back and read the definitions of that those scriptures that we've already defined, okay? Charity, that's agape love. That's agape, that word charity is in the Greek means agape. Suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up, doeth not behave itself unseemly. Right, so we define those six things. Charity suffereth long. Charity is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vault, vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up, and does not behave itself unseemly. We define those six characteristics. And what we found was that love patiently and passionately bears with others for as long as patience is needed. It's the first one. Sometimes we want to be patient until we're done being patient. It's like, all right, they're not changing. I'm done with you. But that's not agape love. That's not being patient. Patient, right, love Patiently and passionately bears with others for as long as patience is needed. Love doesn't demand others to be like itself. Rather, it's focused on the needs of others that it bends over backwards to become what others need it to be. Love is not overly ambitious, self-centered, or so consumed with itself that it never thinks of the needs or desires that others possess. Love doesn't go around talking about itself all the time constantly exaggerating or embellishing the facts to make itself look more important in the sight of others. Love does not behave in a prideful, arrogant, haughty, superior, snotty, snobbish, or clannish way. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Love is not rude or discourteous. It is not careless or thoughtless, nor does it carry on in a fashion that would be considered insensitive to others. Right? All right. So we already know that 2019 is the year of glory mm -hmm. for our church. For St. Louis New Testament Church, it's the year of glory. I know there's a lot of words out there, and I love a lot of people might think, well, what's the right word? The right word is the word that God speaks to you Amen. and to your ministry. Amen. Right? So the word for St. Louis New Testament Church is the year of glory. And glory is the manifested presence of God the manifested goodness of God, and the manifested power of God. All of these things are rooted in love. Mm -hmm. yep. The more love you have, the more glory you'll see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. The more love you have, the more glory you will see. Mm -hmm. Because God is love. love right? Yeah. Okay. So... Knowing how love behaves is vital to seeing the glory of God manifest in your life, wherever you are. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. This is why we got to keep going over these definitions to make sure, you know, can I go a little deeper? <laughs> can I walk in love a little bit more? And the answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. The answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. Don't ever deceive yourself into thinking, I've arrived. Because as long as we're here on this earth, we haven't arrived. Mm -hmm. We haven't arrived until we go home to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And even then, that's when we need to sit down and we're going to study even more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So your love walk matters. 
And it matters because how you behave will determine how God will manifest his presence in your life. And it matters when we come together. The Bible says not to forsake the assemblings of each other. Because there is a corporate anointing that comes and is manifested when we come together. Yes. Part of that anointing is the love. When you have an environment of love, there is acceptance. And even when you do wrong, even when you mess up, you know because people are walking in love that you'll be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you get to take advantage of people. That's it. That's it. Well, because some people say, well, I can do this because they'll forgive me. Yes, we will forgive you, but you know what? That doesn't mean that trust has not been broken. And it takes a long time to build trust again. Yes. Yeah. You can be forgiven, mm -hmm. but you know what? The Holy Spirit's not stupid. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Amen. That's true. okay? Because sometimes, I think a lot of times people don't want to walk in love because they feel like, well, what if I get taken advantage of? The Holy Spirit's not stupid. Mm -hmm. He's not going to allow you to be taken advantage of. Now, it might look like that to the natural eye, okay? But you've got to trust that God knows what he's doing. I know there's been situations. There's a situation when we went to Mexico a couple years ago. I had a couple pastors talking really bad about me and not wanting to submit under my authority. So they thought that they could go on, stay under our ministry but go under somebody else. And I said, I said, well, Lord, what do you want to do? Because I've been dealing with these pastors for what was it five years well, since, you took over. since I took over the situation was 2009. right that's what I'm saying I had the situation at the end and then Paul had it even before that mm -hmm. and it was the same issues like it didn't change and I, I almost to the point where I questioned are you saved <laughs> you know because it was like because it was the, it was really the same issues over and over and over and over again and at some point Something needs to change. Something needs to break, especially if you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. And if you're spending time in the Word, and if you're praying, and you're praying in the Spirit, you're going to see some kind of breakthrough here. Mm -hmm. But it was the same issues over and over and over again. Well, they started, they didn't like my advice, or the Holy Spirit advice, I should say, because I never give anybody my advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so they decided to take it upon themselves to start spreading lies and rumors. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Lord, well, how do you want to handle this? He said, well, you can tell them they could go under this person, but they're no longer under mission of light, and they have to turn in their certificates. And I knew that that would get a response like, you know, because it's like they, don't, they didn't realize what they were asking yeah. and what, what their behavior was doing. And I said, <laughs> I said, okay. And that's exactly what I did. And they were like, well, wait, no, no, no. You know, and it was just this all back and forth stuff. And, um, <laughs> and so I said, well, you're the one that doesn't want to submit under our authority. If you don't submit under our authority, then there's no reason for you to stay under this ministry. Because it's the same. That's right. So we're not rejecting you. You're rejecting us. But... I am letting you go. You are free, and I bless you. And I pray that your ministry prospers. I pray that your marriage prospers. I pray, you know, I, I never want to burn a bridge. Because, you know, people can change. People can change. So it's like, you know what? If you can get some help from a, from a different place, please go. Please, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't think that I'm so prideful that, oh, okay, you're only going to be blessed under our ministry. No, mm -hmm. no. Right. You can be blessed under other people's ministries. So you're not my problem. No. <laughs> I'm teasing. Well, so we were going through this back and forth for two weeks before I had to go to Mexico. It was just complete distraction. And then I get to Mexico and we're still going back and forth and they, uh, didn't honor their word. They were supposed to host the meetings. They didn't honor their word. 
And so, but we had a backup because I was like, well, I already knew what was happening and what was going to happen. So it wasn't a big surprise. And I already had asked, well, can you ask pastor so-and-so to see if we could do the meetings over there instead? And uh, so it all worked out. This pastor was already here in the Holy Spirit and said, I already asked if this was available. So it's, it's available if you need it. And I was like, praise God. Somebody's listening to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Well, they were, re I mean, it, the devil just amped it up, and they were really talking. Like, whew, they were really talking. And I said, well, Lord, do you want me to do anything else? He said, no, leave it. Just leave it. You're done. Yeah, that's it. You're done. <laughs> so my, my uh, national director <laughs> spoke to Carmen, and we were at the store, and I stayed in the car. And so they all went inside, and... And then he's like, I just don't understand. Isn't the apostle going to go over to their church and say something and correct them for this behavior and all this? You know? <laughs> I don't even remember what she said. You're just like. I'm trying to stay in the spirit. Yeah, she's trying to stay in the spirit. Like, well, you know, just trust the apostle. Exactly, she hears yeah. the Lord. And yeah. Yeah, exactly, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and one of the reasons why the Lord didn't have me do that is because it would not have gone well. Mm -mm. Because they were in a place to hear anyway. Right. Yes. So, and I'm not so insecure to think that I have to defend myself. Because mm -hmm. I don't have to please everybody. Amen. The only person I need to please is the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, if they're upset and they're angry. You know, I'm sorry, but this is what God is telling me. And you want to reject this authority and this covering. Well, these, this is the consequence for that. You don't get to have it both ways. You don't get the name and then get to go and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think they were just really surprised and I was just like, okay, Lord. And I just, I was just calm. And I was just like, you know what, Lord, I just give it to you. Because, and if other pastors want to go, they can go. We didn't lose any pastors because they left. Now they tried. Yeah. They tried to take some, oh, you know. Because they went to some other ministry, but actually it wasn't under their covering. It was just a Bible college that they're going to. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so they're trying to get people to go there and all that stuff. And they're like, it's the same teach as a mission of mine. Da, 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 da. And it's like, yeah, you know, but we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the one of the reasons too, and you know, God is so good. And this is why you have to trust him. Because see, I didn't have to defend myself. The Holy Spirit started doing it. Mm -hmm. Because see, the devil will reveal himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's exactly what started happening. The devil started re revealing himself. So I didn't need to say anything because people just started walking up to me and they were just telling me things. And I was like, yeah, well, we just need to pray for them. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Because see, if I would have tried defending myself and making them look bad, that would have defeated the whole purpose. Sometimes you don't have to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Just let the Lord do it. Amen. Just let the Lord speak on your behalf. Okay. Sometimes we're so busy trying to defend ourselves. Or, oh, what are people going to think? What are people? I don't care what other people are going to think. Because everybody has their own opinion. But the most important opinion is God. And so this is why it's so important that we understand how to walk in love and how to behave because it's to help you out. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. To make you look more mature than you really are. Right? And see, the more you submit to love, the more Amen. you submit to the Holy Spirit, Amen. the more mature you're going to get. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's true. This is why it's awesome. Uh, yes, it is. Much needed. Mm -hmm. All right, so today we're going to go over the next three characteristics. We're already in 1 Corinthians 13. Let's go over to verse 5. Let me make sure. Hold on. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to make sure because I have like two different numbers on my notes. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so 1 Corinthians verse 5. 
All right, so we already defined doeth not behave itself unseemly. So now we're going to look at seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. All right, so those are the three characteristics that we're going to discuss tonight. I'm going to say it again, all right? That love does not seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. All right, so let's look at the first characteristic. The first characteristic is seeketh not her own. The word seeketh in the Greek means to seek. That's easy. That's great. However, it also is used to depict a person who is upset about not getting what he wanted, that it turns to a court system to sue or demand what he is striving to obtain. Okay. Let me say that again. It means to seek. But it also depicts a person, this is the image that, it, that this word is showing, when a person is upset about not getting what they want, that they turn to a court system to sue or demand what they are striving to obtain for, of, right? So instead of taking no for an answer, this person is so intent on getting their own way that they will seek, they will search out, they will investigate all of the ways in order to pursue a person to give in. Mm. Even if it's underhanded. Even if lying, manipulating, whatever they need to do to get that yes, they will do it. Right? That's why it can be a bad thing. Because it's like, yes, there's, there are, we do want to have a characteristic where we do want to go after things. And we want to be bold and we want to be, you know, persevere and do all these things. But it gets bad when you have to lie, you have to manipulate, you have to control, you got to look for loopholes or you put words in people's mouths. Mm -hmm. See, all of those things, when you start doing that, that's a bad thing. Because you're not being honest and trying to get what you want. You're using deceit mm -hmm. to get what you want. Let's go and look at a Bible example. 1 Kings 21. First Kings 21, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 19. We're not going to read all of it, but just some of it. But this is the story of King Ahab and Jezebel. You guys all know Ahab and Jezebel? Yeah. A <laughs> little too well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now this was, this is the chapter where they, um, where King Ahab wants Naboth's vineyard, right? So 1 Kings 21, right? And we're going to read verse 1. I'm going to read the New Living Translation because it really makes it clear, <laughs> all right? Now there was a man named Naboth from Jezreel who owned a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Syria. One day Ahab said to Naboth, Since your vineyard is so convenient to my palace, I would like to buy it to use as a vegetable garden. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will pay you for it. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance that was passed down from my ancestors. So Ahab went home angry and sullen because of Nabu's answer. And the king went to bed with his face to the wall and refused to eat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you think this is a king, but is this the only piece of land that's around your palace? Like really? This can't be that big. But See, once he got this in his heart, it was like, what? No. Uh, right? Okay. So verse 5. What's the matter? His wife Jezebel asked him. What made you so upset that you're not eating? I asked Naboth to sell me his vineyard or trade it, but he refused. Are you the king of Israel or not? Jezebel demanded. Get up and eat something and don't worry about it. I'll get you Naboth's vineyard. Okay. So she wrote letters. And well, let's look at how she's going to get this vineyard, okay? <laughs> okay? 
So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, number one, lying mm -hmm. and deceiving. She didn't get permission from Ahab to do this. She just took this upon herself. She said, I'll get it for you. She didn't say, can I use your name? <laughs> this is what I'm planning to do. You okay with this? She didn't say that. She said, I'll get it for you, honey. You just sit that one there, baby. I got it. <laughs> like, okay. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the elders and other leaders of the town where Naboth lived. In her letters, she commanded, call the citizens together for a time of fasting and give Naboth a place of honor. And then sit two scoundrels across from him who will accuse him of cursing God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. Wow. I mean, now she's going to the point where Whatever now we're getting into murder. Yeah, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to get this little vineyard. Wow. Right? And it's interesting because the Bible doesn't really say how old Naboth is. Mm. If he has children or not. Mm. He just said, no, God forbid. I This vineyard's been in my family for generations. How could I sell it? Because there's sometimes there is no price on stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just priceless. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was saying. And this is what discouraged him. So let's, get, let's go at verse 11. So the elders in the other towns followed the instructions of Jezebel, had written in the letters. They called for a fast, and they, they did all of that. Let's skip down. So, in, in, um, so Naboth was stoned to death. Now verse 15. When Jezebel heard the news, she said to Ahab, You know the vineyard Naboth wouldn't sell to you? Well, you can have it now. He's dead. So Ahab immediately went down to the vineyard of Naboth to claim it. Right? So he's happy. Woohoo! I got a vineyard now. Thank you, baby. <laughs> he didn't ask, <laughs> like, what? He's dead. How did he die? Yeah. No, he's just like, yeah, all right, I got what I want. Yeah. See, both of them were wrong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> both of them are wrong. Verse 17. But the Lord said to Elijah, go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be at Naboth's vineyard in Jezreel, claiming it for himself. Give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Wasn't it enough that you killed Naboth, but you, ro you rob him too? Because you have done this, dogs will lick your blood at the very place where they licked the blood of Naboth. Wow. That puts a whole other meaning to you reap what you sow. Yeah. <laughs> you really... And that's exactly what happened. Because he didn't, he didn't even repent. <laughs> no, he didn't even repent. He didn't, you know, he went crying again to, Je to Jezebel. Ooh, mind the prophet said this. And she's like, oh, honey, I'll take care of it for you, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Oh, I'll take care of him. Well, she got taken care of. Right? So because they schemed, they lied, they manipulated the truth, it didn't go well for Ahab and Jezebel. Even though it may have looked like they got what they wanted, mm -hmm. they couldn't keep it. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what lying, manipulating, scheming, it might get you what you think you want and what you've been desiring, but you won't be able to maintain it and keep it. It'll Eventually it'll go. Eventually it will go. So love does not manipulate situations or schemes and devise methods that will twist situations to its own advantage. That's right. This is why we have to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? See, if God, if you have a desire in your heart, God will help you get it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just have to wait for the right time and follow him. Sometimes we have to wait for the right, you know, a lot of people, they want to get married. And instead of waiting for, uh, <laughs> for, the, for the right one, they, they get an Ishmael. That's true. That's true. And then they're wondering, you know, why, why aren't I living in wedding bliss? God, well, because you were so desperate to get married that you really didn't ask God if he was the one. You just said, God, make him the one. 
Then there's two prayers. God, show me who the one is, or God, make him the one, or make her the one. Mm -hmm. See, that's a dangerous prayer. Make her the one, make him the one, because he might not be the one. It's more than just, and this is what I, you know, sometimes I have to counsel to single people or, or young people that are in a relationship and it's just not the Lord. You can tell it's just not the Lord. And it's like, it does it has nothing to do with whether they're good or not and how, how they treat you. I, I'm so happy that they treat you well, that they are, you know, on fire for God. That is awesome. But it's about anointing and it's about call. And you have to make sure that the person that you decide to marry, that they're called to do what you're called to do. Because if not, there's going to be some conflict there. Because you're having this desire to do this, and then they want to go and do that. Yeah. See, if you're called here to stay in St. Louis, and you marry somebody that's called to go to Africa... Amen. At some point, you you got to choose God. So he's going to have to go to Africa. You're going to have to stay here. Because you got to, you know, follow the Lord. Now you can go. And, and nothing bad will happen. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you, you got to ask the Lord. And sometimes, yeah, he has grace and he has mercy. But, you know, a lot of, this is why. This is why the body of Christ has a 50% divorce rate, just like the world. Because we're not fully following the Holy Spirit. You know? We're teaching, well, wait till you get married to have sex. And that's why they want to that's why they want to get married, to have sex. True. And it's like, you know what? Five minutes of satisfaction isn't worth your whole life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> by the King James translators. And some say that the translators added this <laughs> for into the King James Version to make a certain point to the king. Right? Because King James was known for losing his temper and flying off the handle. So they were trying to make a, a real point to him. Like, you know, love's not easily provoked, king. <laughs> Read this one. <laughs> All right. Now, the word provoked in the Greek means provoked. 
And it's a compound word where when you separate the two, the first part of it means to, to come alongside, okay? The second part of that word means to poke, to prick, to stick, as with a sharpened instrument. It's also the same word for, for vinegar, which is like astringent or a sharp, severe, sour <coughs> or tart kind of taste, very bitter, right? When you put these words together, it portrays someone who comes alongside another and then begins to poke and prick or stick that other person with some kind of sharp instrument, okay? You know, and he continues to do this to his victim until he's provoked. So the victim is provoked into doing something, right? Now, when the victim has finally had enough of this person poking them and sticking them, they will respond violently or aggressively, right? You know, if somebody's like poking you, you know, if I go over there and poke Mickey with, with a stick or a pen, she's only gonna let me do that a couple of times. Right. It's that many. It's that many, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, she'll be like, stop that, you know? I'm gonna stop that. And, and if I keep doing it, it's like, stop it. You know, it, it kind of ups, you know, the tone gets a little sharper mm -hmm. until it's like, you know what? I'm just smack you in the face. I'm going to smack you in the face. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? All right. Now, we see this same Greek word in Acts 15. So let's go over to Acts 15. All right. Now, this is where Paul and Barnabas got into a fight regarding John Mark. See, you think all the fights happen now. <laughs> Disciples had to, they went through a lot. <laughs> all right, Acts 15, and we're going to start at verse 35. Okay, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them, from Pal Pamphylia, and went not with them to, to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder from, from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brother unto the grace of God. Now, if you go back to verse 39, that word sharp is the same word in the Greek as you see in 1 Corinthians 13, as easily, that same Greek word that means provoked. Okay? So they were going at it in not a nice way. It got to a point where they were, angry words were being spoken, you know, over John Mark. <laughs> okay? So it wasn't just a small disagreement. Right? This was an extremely heated conversation that happened quickly. Mm -hmm. right? Paul's like, no, we're not going to bring him. And Barnabas is like, no, we need to bring him. He's like, no, we're not going to bring him. <laughs> and so it just got heated very quickly. Right? This exchange was so severe that it destroyed their ministry partnership. Because it said they split. Mm -hmm. Paul went one way. He got Silas to be his partner, and then Barnabas went another way with John Mark, right? Okay. And so when Paul is telling us that love is not easily provoked, he's speaking from experience. Because later on, he, he does address this later on, and he regrets this. He regrets what happened with him and Barnabas. You know, you know, when you start doing ministry work, those are your brothers and sisters. Yeah. And when a separation happens like that, it's, it's devastating for both sides. And even though you might be angry, there's a lot of hurt 
There's a lot of hurt there. And so when Paul is telling us, you know, do not, love is not easily provoked, he is talking from experience and having reached the consequences of him losing his temper and saying regrettable and sharp words in the midst of a conflict. If you can have disagreements, but it's how that escalates mm -hmm. will determine the result. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're escalating, that's when you need to like oh, I need to take a step back. We need to stop this conversation right now <laughs> because I'm gonna about to say something that I might regret. So let's just take a breather and we'll come back again. You know, I'm not trying to escape or run away from this conversation, but I just think I need to calm down and collect my thoughts and really look at the situation for what it is. Mm -hmm. There's no problem in saying that. No. Amen. Instead of just letting it go and just flying <laughs> off the handle and yelling and screaming and doing all of that, right? So needless to say, agape doesn't act like this, right? Right. right? All right, so when we put this definition back into the scripture, it says love does not deliberately engage in actions or speak words that are sharp or <clears throat> cause an ugly or violent response. Right? But sometimes, especially with the people you love, you live with, you know how to push their buttons. You know exactly what to say and how to say it that will get them to just fly off the handle. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and love doesn't do that. That's true. Mm -hmm. Love does not do that. Yeah, but they did this and they did that and I, we've talked about this over and over and over again. He just doesn't get her. She just doesn't get it. Doesn't matter. Love does not provoke. Mm -hmm. It's not easily provoked. Mm -hmm. You've got to watch what you say. And that goes for your children, too. Yep. You know? Parents are not to provoke their, their children unto wrath. Mm -hmm. That's another scripture in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes what you say, you, you're provoking your kids. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you say one thing, that yeah, you could do that, and then you go back on that, that's a provoke. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you mean I can't do that? You just said yesterday that I can do that. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. We're not doing that. To you. you know, they just fly off the handle. Mm -hmm. That's why. You just provoked them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So why you got to honor your word yeah. to your own herd. Mm -hmm. Even when, you know, you think that they're going to make a mistake. Let them make a mistake. You got to learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we try to guard our children too much mm -hmm. to where they can't learn natural consequences. Mm -hmm. And they need to learn natural consequences in your home so you can guide them, so you can teach them. Because mm -hmm. you don't want them learning these natural consequences on their own, mm -hmm. where there's nobody. Mm -hmm. And you, they feel embarrassed and they can't talk to anybody. And then they get into a financial situation that is just not good. You want to, and, and we have to explain to them, well, this is why you want to do this. But if you want to, if you want to do that, if you want to buy from this website, that doesn't look like a credible website, but if you want to buy from there, you can do it. But this is what could happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, or they want to buy something and you know that is just not good quality and it's going to break in a week. But I really want to buy it. I want to, you know, you know that is trash. That is, but I really want to buy it. I really want it. It's my money, and I, I did this, and I did that. It's not, let them get it so they can learn from that. Because how many times did you waste money? How many times did you buy stuff that broke the next day or buy stuff that you used one time, and now it's in the back of the closet? And you go, well, I'm not going to do that again. Right? <laughs> Till the next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for being wiser with our money. <laughs> you know? you got to allow them to make those mistakes and be able to come to you to, to talk through those things. Because our children shouldn't feel like they have to be perfect. Amen. But they can be godly. They can be holy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we make mistakes. 
but there's forgiveness mm -hmm. and there's repentance. Mm -hmm. And we have to teach our kids that. Mm -hmm. Right? So love does not easily provoke. Right? Now, we're going to our last characteristic, meaning that love thinketh no evil. This is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. Love thinketh no evil. Now, that word thinketh in the Greek is an accounting term that means to count or reckon. It literally means to credit to one's account. Okay? So that, so thinketh, the word thinketh in the Greek means, it's an accounting term that means to count or reckon. It literally means to credit to one's account. Now I want you to imagine seeing a bookkeeper or an accountant who meticulously keeps accurate financial records. Every penny is accounted for, right? Now, instead of seeing a bookkeeper, picture an offended person who's keeping detailed records of every wrong that has ever been done to them. I mean, detail. Every little detail. They can explain to you what happened, and that, that situation may have happened 25 years ago, and they are speaking about it like it happened yesterday. Right? This person remembers all the mistakes, all the faults, all the grievances, all the disappointments, all the failures, all the perceived wrongdoings a person may have made against them. Mm -hmm. So rather than forget and let go, the offended person keeps track every time an unfair or unjust action was done to them. Is this how love behaves? Mm -hmm. Let's see how God is towards us. Because God is our example, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is God towards us? Psalms, go to Psalms 86, verse 5. Psalms 86, verse 5. Say amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. One. I got two. Amen. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Psalms 86, verse 5 says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. But God is already ready to forgive. Right? Because he knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows we're going to sin against him, and yet he's still ready to forgive. Are you ready to forgive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But really, I mean, just, you know, we add, add, really answer that honestly. Are we ready to forgive? anyone Amen. not just you know your favorite people yeah. not just your pastor but are you ready to forgive yeah. anyone mm -hmm. right so. okay and so although god could drag up he could drag up every failure every mistake every wrong unjust <laughs> sinful thing that we've ever done to him he chooses not to bring it up once we've repented from it. Once we've repented and we ask God to forgive us, he cleanses us, he washes us, and he, he doesn't account, he, like, he erases it. It's like you have to envision not like a book where you record things, because everything that we've done is recorded. But it's like on a, an erase board. He's writing, he's writing, and then he's like, oh, you repented from that. It's off. It's off. And you know what? We might do the same thing the next day. And we're like, Lord, I'm sorry. For I did it again. And God is saying to you, what, do you, what did you do again? What did you do again? Because he's not keeping a record. He's not keeping a record. Psalms 103, verse 3. He who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. So how many iniquities does he forgive? Oh. All of them. Not just a few, all of them, right? 
And if you go down to verse 10 in Psalms 103, verse 10, it says, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. All right, so God is not dealing with us based on what we've done. He's dealing with us based on the sacrifice Jesus made on our behalf. Right? So even though he could remember all past mistakes, he chooses not to. And if we keep reading verse 11 and 12, it says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is he is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Ooh. Good. Wow. Awesome. Right? Jeremiah 31, <coughs> verses 31 and 34. You don't have to go there. Let me just read these to you. All right, but Jeremiah 31, verses 33 and 34. It says, And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Now, see, the Lord is speaking to Jeremiah about what he's going to do. And this was foreshadowing the sacrifice of Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? God doesn't keep records of our past forgiven sins. I'm going to say that. Forgiven sins. Okay? Once you've repented from God to God, those sins are now under the blood of Jesus, and God separates them from you forever, right? 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if God is not keeping a record of wrongdoing, should we? No. No. And see, this is what, you want to know the reason why you keep a record? Because, again, we do not understand and we underestimate the blood of Jesus. And we underestimate the power of love and the power of prayer. I, I know, I know, I could hand this mic and we could all tell our sob story, okay, about people that have betrayed us, lied about us, hurt us physically, and all of those things. But our job is not to keep a record of every sin that was against us. Our job is to give it to the Lord. So that he can, number one, heal us, okay? Because our source are not people. Our source is the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he uses people to help us. Mm -hmm. But when our dependency is on people, that's when we get hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's when we get hurt. I know, because it's happened to me. And when I start putting my, tr my whole trust and everything and my whole dependency actually on people... They will disappoint every time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Every time. But if I put all my dependency on the Lord, even though a person may not follow through or do what they said, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't affect me. Because it's like, okay, well, Lord, what do you want to do about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's either somebody else that will pick up the slack or it'll just say, well, just leave it. And you can get to it when you can get to it. Mm -hmm. But see, offended people keep track of offense and the sins that other people do to them. Why? Because then I can go back when somebody asks me, well, why aren't you talking to so-and-so? Well, you just don't understand what they did to me. They said this about me, and they did this, and they keep talking bad about me. <laughs> now, that's not to say that there are times where you have to remove yourself from certain people. God will have you remove yourself from certain people. But that should be a period of time where you're getting healing from the Lord. And you're gonna, you can ask him and get understanding, okay, Lord, why is this hurting me so much? You know, why is this affecting me so much? Because you know what? People are going to talk, okay? 
The devil is still here on the earth. He's still roaming around. People are going to gossip. I know, because as a pastor, people come up to me and they're trying to gossip with me. <laughs> you know what I heard about Pastor So and So? <laughs> I'm like, what did you hear? <laughs> what did you hear? Like, well, I can tell you number one, that person's not telling you the complete story. Hey? Mm -hmm. okay? Because you know what you have to remember, there's always three sides to every three sides to every story. His side, her side, and then the truth. Mm -hmm. So when somebody tells you something, you gotta go, Holy Spirit, what's the truth here? Because that just sounds weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And and you know what? Joyce Meyer said it. Right. Hurting people hurt people. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Hurting people hurt people. Yeah. So if you're wondering, I don't understand why they just keep talking bad. Because they're hurting. Yeah. They are hurting. And you're the, an outlet. It's as simple as that. You're like, but why? Why me? Why not you? Why not you so the Holy Spirit can rise up in you and you can ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, this person's talking bad about me, but how do you want me to pray for them? Exactly. Instead of getting all upset and bent out of shape. And then ask the Lord, Lord, you know, what? how do you want me to deal with this person? And sometimes he may say, well, you know, you're going to have to remove yourself from the situation because it's, mm -hmm. it's going to you know, end up getting worse instead of better. Mm -hmm. But see, all of this is to just keep asking the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to do this? How do you want me to handle this? How do you want me to respond to this? Right? Mm -hmm. Let's go over to Matthew 11. Mm -hmm. you, uh, let's look at a few more scriptures. Because we looked at some Old Testament scriptures. Let's look at some New Testament scriptures. Because we've got better promises and a better covenant in the New Testament. Amen? Amen. Yeah, Amen. Mark 11, 25 and 26. Mark and this is Matthew? Mark 11, sorry. Mark 11. Yeah, don't go to Matthew. Go to Mark. Go to the other men. M. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mark 11, 25 and 26. And when he stand, and when you stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. See, forgive, for, we have to remind ourselves that forgiveness isn't so much for that person, but it's for us. Mm -hmm. Right? Because for, forgiveness allows us to let go and let God heal us. Mm -hmm. When you continue to hold on to forgiveness, you are putting up a wall that God cannot penetrate to bring love and healing. Because when you build up a wall, love cannot go in or go out. Instead of walls, we have a shield of faith that is over us. And actually, it's not a shield that's just the front. It's like a force field all around us. <laughs> yep. That's true. It is. It's, it's, it, that's what it really is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a force field all around us that protects us. And the only way it can protect us is by following the Holy Spirit and acknowledging him in what? Oh. All of your ways. Yep. All of your ways. Okay? Right? Luke 6, 36 and 37 says, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Now, I'm going to say something. You can disagree with this or not. <laughs> but avoidance is not forgiveness. Amen. Amen. You, you can <laughs> avoid somebody. Say, I forgive them. I forgive them. But let me ask you, every time you hear that name, what happens? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You actually, yeah, yeah, exactly. So avoidance doesn't necessarily mean you've forgiven, yep. right? That could just be, I just need to be separate from that person for a mm -hmm. little bit. But that does not excuse you from going to the Lord and start working on forgiveness. Forgiveness mm -hmm. is a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
A lot of people think, oh, I've forgiven him. No, you haven't. You You forgave him as much as you could today. Mm -hmm. And you might think that that's all of it, but I guarantee you, a year from now, it's going to come full circle again. And there's going to be a deeper level of forgiveness there. Right, so it's a process that continually happens. Because you, there are some things that I thought, I thought I was over that. I, yeah. I really thought that I had forgiven this person. Well, yeah, to the point that I could that day, that year. But you know what? I've grown in the Lord a little bit more. And because I've grown, there's a deeper level that God wants to show me. Because there's still some insecurity in there that wants to get out and it's a grab to hold of that. It's grabbed a hold of that offense. Or somebody might do something similar that somebody else did. Mm-hmm. <coughs> That's a good one. Yep. And you think, see? See, they're all the same. No, not all the same. This is why we have to keep asking the Holy Spirit. All right, so when we're tempted to keep mental records of wrongdoings, we need to be aware that we are not giving that person the same mercy that God gave to us. And and I'll be very truthful and honest. It takes the love of God to forgive. Yeah. From the smallest to the biggest. It, It really does take the love of God to forgive. Mm -hmm. And that does not excuse that person's sin or behavior towards you. Mm -hmm. God will take care of that. And I know there's been, I know some horrendous things have happened. But we still need to forgive because God wants to heal that wound. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. You're not forgiving that let me just say this you're not discounting that sin like it never happened like it is just nothing no because it was something it did happen but you're forgiving so that you can receive healing and then you can be a voice of love to somebody else you can give hope to somebody right hallelujah hallelujah All right, so when we put that back into the scripture, it says love does not deliberately keep records of wrongs or past mistakes. So when you're fighting with your husband or your wife, you can't say, you always. (laughs) (laughs) Don't bring that. He's repented. If she's repented, you get just, it's done. It's done. That's what they call fighting fair. <laughs> fighting fair, you don't bring up past things. Well, you always do. No, that's no. We're talking about this situation right here. Right here, stick to the facts. Stick to this situation right here. You don't need to be bringing all that, you know. You do this and you do that and you do this and that, you know. And another thing. You know, while we're talking about this, let me get up and no, that's not the time to bring out all the dirty laundry, okay? Because <laughs> you're not going to fix everything in one night. Or no. <laughs> so just stick to one issue and then help God, ask God to help you with that. <laughs> the saying the the sad is when you fight clean and keep the bedroom dirty. <laughs> wow. 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 I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know what to say. manipulate situations or scheme and devise methods that will twist situations to its own advantage. Okay? Love does not deliberately engage in actions or speak words that are sharp or cause an ugly or violent response. And love does not deliberately keep records of wrongs or past mistakes. As 
after hearing all of that, and you don't don't raise your hand, just look straight ahead. <laughs> Most of us. <laughs> after hearing all of that, how many are looking in the mirror? Because this word is a mirror to us. Yes, it is. And going, you know what? Am I doing that? And if I'm not doing that, Lord, help me. Help me go one more step. Yeah. Just, just one more step. It doesn't have to be all at once. But just show me one more step. Because God will show you that one more step that you need to take. So that you can walk a little bit more in love and exhibit this, this behavior. Because this is what this is all about. Right, learning this def these definitions is so that we can take one more step to walk more in love. Mm -hmm. Right, yep. so we can manifest the love of God to ourselves and to our family members, to our church family members, to everybody around us. Mm -hmm. Right, see, because God's calling us to a higher level of love, mm -hmm. and the only way we can do that is if we're completely honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We, we have to, you have to be completely honest. We can't be it's like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> There's, out of, we're going over 15 characteristics. Out of all 15, I know that you're not operating at all 15. Consistently. Yeah, consistently. Okay. And see, this is what it's all about, mm -hmm. is to get to a point where we're consistently operating in all 15 characteristics. And you know how you do that? Because you can think that is impossible. I cannot do that. Yes, you can. Yes. You can do that because if you follow the Holy Spirit, who is love, you will fulfill and manifest all 15 characteristics. Amen. This is possible. Say it. This is possible. This is possible. I can walk in love. I can walk in love. Mm -hmm. I can manifest, I can manifest. All, 15 all 15 characteristics of love, of love. Because, God's love because God's love is in me. His love is shed abroad in my heart. His love is shed abroad in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Allow God to convict your heart, but not bring condemnation. Yes. Okay? The devil brings condemnation. God convicts. Yes. Mm -hmm. And conviction lasts for a moment. Yeah. Because it's like, ooh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Okay, Lord, help me. Help me in this area. And it could be that, you know, you need to write down. Maybe you need to go home and get into your prayer closet, and the Lord might show you some names of some people. And I said, you know what? You're, you're keeping a record wrong for this person. You need to forgive them. Mm -hmm. oh. I remember my mom, when my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer years ago, she went to her prayer closet and she said, okay, Lord, I know there's some unforgiveness there. Um, show me who I'm not, I haven't forgiven fully. And she thought that it might be one or two people. <laughs> she's writing and writing she's like 20 people she's like oh my goodness <laughs> <What? Just laughs> and see when we're honest with ourselves and we allow God to show us we'll surprise ourselves because it's easy to deceive ourselves and think well like, yeah okay that this person and that person and you know maybe this person here and there but yeah that's it but when we really ask the Lord to show us, the list gets a little longer. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, it does. And I'm like, hmm. You know, sometimes when something like bugs me or I'm frustrated, it's like, well, why does that bug me and frustrate me? Show me. Because this shouldn't. And it's not that person. There's something in me. And, and so I got to go to the Holy Spirit. And I gotta ask them, or why are they frustrating me? Right. Now it could be things that they need to work on, but you know what? That is not my job to figure out if they're working on it or not. I give them to the Lord, and the Lord deals with them, right? Because just because you might know what that person needs to work on doesn't mean that that's what God is telling them to work on. 
and spouses. You might know what your spouse needs to work on, but remember, God has told them what they need to work on. And it might not be what you think it is. So if you just give them to the Lord and just pray. Amen. And just speak over them what the Holy Spirit tells you to speak. And you speak when God tells you to speak. You, know? you are not their corrector. That's right. You're not their God. You're not their Holy Spirit. you got to allow God to deal with their heart. And yes, God might have you say some things, but they'll know it's the Lord. Yeah. And you'll know it's the Lord. Because you'll be surprised, like, oh, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> and they'll know. So trust the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Love is a powerful thing. Yes. Even the world knows that love is powerful. Yep. But they don't know what real love is. Mm -hmm. And see, this is why the church has to stand up. And we got to get this. Because we have to demonstrate what real love is. That's right. Because yep. this is what will build the church. Yes. But there's like 7 billion people in the world, and only about 2. Point, maybe 2.5, that's probably being really generous, are Christians. We're failing. We are failing. We're failing. And it's because of the hypocrisy that's come out of the church yep. and the hate that's come out. Oh yeah. You know, we can speak truth, but not be hateful. Because yeah. you, know, you gotta speak truth. But we can be, speak truth and not be hateful. Mm -hmm. But it takes following the Holy Spirit and really knowing what love is. Amen. And I know sometimes it's hard to you know say some things, but sometimes we, we you know we just have to. Well, this is. This is truth. And I know you might not agree with it, but this is what we believe. And I'll tell you what, there's a reason why the world is attacking Christians, especially in this nation. Right? Because they won't attack any other religion because they're scared of all the other religions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get, you know, you get accused of being a racist or a bigot if you start accusing, you know, the Jewish people and, uh, you know, a xenophobe if you accuse the Muslims how they've accused Christians. Mm -hmm. well, you know, all those religions really believe almost the same things about sin. <laughs> but it's the Christians that are bigoted and racist and all of this stuff. And this is why we, we have to stand up and say something because we haven't said something. But we have to do it in love. Mm -hmm. We got to do it by the Holy Spirit. Because when it's done in love and when it's done by the Holy Spirit, there's an authority of love that will penetrate the hearts of the people and they will listen. Yeah. Amen. And some people might not listen. But that's not our job. Our job is to speak truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did that help anybody? Yes. Yeah.